Can everyone hear me? Welcome everyone. I'm Meru Gokhe from Penguin India. Thank you for being here this evening for the book launch of Amitav Ghosh's new work of nonfiction, The Great Derangement, Climate Change and the Unthinkable. This is an urgent, timely and important book and will challenge the way that you think about climate change which is easily the most important test that the human race has ever been faced with. We're delighted to have Amitav Ghosh here with us in conversation with Sudhita Narayan. Please, let's give them a big hand. <laughs> Sunita Narayan is, of course, an iconic political and environmental activist and currently the director of the Center for Science and Environment. We are now going to show you a short video about Amitabh's new book, The Great Derangement. <coughs> events are very, very difficult to write about. Extreme events, improbable events are very difficult to write about. And I know this myself as a writer. I had an extraordinary encounter with a very, very uh, strange weather event. I didn't even recognize what it was because, you know, we didn't, uh, we in India have very little awareness of uh, phenomena like tornadoes. For years afterwards, I tried to write about this event in, uh, in a sort of meaningful way. I tried to sort of even think of incorporating it in my in my books and novels and I always found myself struggling with it. I'm a marine ecologist, I've been working in the system quite some years now and what I can tell you is uh, the oceans are being hit in various ways that you cannot even imagine. Just look at the cost of our seafood production and you know, what does it mean to produce those fish on your table. You know, now the major gear that's used to catch and produce a lot of our seafood is uh, trawl fishers. Uh, this is a technique that is really unselective, it's destructive. Uh, you target a few species, but you pretty much catch an entire ecosystem in your net. Now this not just obviously has an impact on the ecosystem, but it also has a huge impact on livelihoods of small scale fishing communities that depend on a lot of these fish species, and also a long term sort of survival of the fishery itself. You have all these multiple stressors acting on a marine system, okay, that have an impact, as I said, not just on ecosystems, but also on livelihoods, and you sort of uh, have the overarching umbrella of climate change. Now that is like the recipe for a perfect storm. Just this year, this incredible heat wave that we've had across northern India and across central India, I mean, it's astonishing, unprecedented. It's been a problem modeling the monsoon. So even now, climate models don't all agree on whether the monsoon rainfall will increase or decrease. But what all models agree about is that the frequency of extremes is going to change, which means the frequency of droughts and excess rainfall years, that is going to be changed. For example, in 2015, you know that uh, we are sitting in Maharashtra. In Maratwada region of Maharashtra, more than 1,000 farmers committed suicide. And you and I were paying more than rupees 200 per kilo of tool dust. Now these are all adverse impacts of the drought. So the question arises, are we adapting to this? And after all, unlike unexpected effects of climate change, droughts are nothing new. We have experienced droughts for centuries. So we should have been able to adapt. Are we adapting to it? Unfortunately, it appears that we are not adapting to it, and still there are very large impacts on agriculture, economy, and so on. If you consider that, you know, Parliament just a couple of weeks ago finally held uh, some uh, a session uh, to talk about the drought, and only 80 MPs turned up to discuss what is the most single most important uh, thing that is happening uh, in this country right now. I mean, it really does, in a way, defy belief. The inconvenient truth in climate change is not that climate change is happening. But that climate change is about sharing the economic growth between nations and within nations. I mean, if you look at the most recent uh, sorts of uh, uh, 
weather-related events around India. You know, so for example, these terrible deluges that have happened in Mumbai in these last uh, eight to ten years, this terrible deluge that we saw in Chennai, uh, you know, last year. I mean, uh, you know, those things. Are